So while deep what no one nurse made is unengaged, fine. Draw the top card of the encounter deck. We get a lurking deep one. Now this is a problem. Now we're being attacked by everything. This could be a big issue. The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are continuing with our campaign through the Innsmouth Conspiracy with Silas Marsh. We took on horror in high gear last week. This time around, we're going to take on the sixth scenario in that campaign, A Light in the Fog. This is a blind playthrough. I have not had a chance to play this scenario yet. So apologies in advance if I make any mistakes. There are spoilers through if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your reward. That would be awesome. Special thanks to Cole Monroe Tritty for the amazing art that graces the channel, Nicole Fiscus for the new Whisper in Darkness logo that I use for the podcast, and Nate Lost in Time and Space for the intro as well as the overlays. Thank you very much. I couldn't do it without you. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello, Arkham Horror fans. I am back to take on A Light in the Fog with uh, Silas Marsh. As I mentioned at the top, this is a blind playthrough. I have not had a chance to uh, finish off this campaign yet, so that is what we're going to do over the next couple weeks. And then we are going to dive into Edge of the Earth. So apologies in advance if I make any mistakes. Just a reminder that if you are a patron of the channel, stay tuned for the Patreon post-game show where I discuss uh, my deck's performance as well as my thoughts uh, on the scenario. So stay tuned for that. Silas Marsh had a uh, pretty good run through Horror and High Gear. I'm still not sure whether I played that scenario entirely correctly, but uh, here we are on the sixth scenario, A Light in the Fog. Unfortunately, we drew our weakness right at the end of Horror in High Gear, Unspeakable Oath Curiosity. So we didn't earn any experience points for that scenario, which was uh, unfortunate. Fortunately, I feel like of all the classes that can afford to lose some experience points, uh, survivors are probably chief among them. Just a quick reminder of how the deck is uh, built. This is based on Silas Marching to Glory by Minea13 over on Arkham DB. I'll leave a link in the description down below. The goal of this deck is to evade anything that uh, doesn't need killing with a combination of Peter Sylvester and Track Shoes. We managed to upgrade to Peter Sylvester 2, so we have a little bit of additional willpower, which is always nice for Silas, as well as extra agility. We can defeat enemies that we need to kill, say enemies with the hunter keyword or those worth VP, with meat cleaver or our sea change harpoon, our signature asset. We gather clues with a combination of old key ring, look what I found, belly of the beast, and true understanding. When we upgraded our deck, we replaced both copies of Look What I Found with Sharp Vision, which will hopefully help us discover uh, multiple clues at uh, locations. A little bit easier than, uh, than Look What I Found. Our uh, basic weakness is, uh, as I mentioned, Unspeakable Oath Curiosity, which we need to investigate a location with no clues. Otherwise, we earn two fewer experience points at the end of a scenario. That's kind of tough for poor old Silas. He doesn't have a lot of investigation to begin with, so sort of taking investigate actions that don't generate clues for him is uh, a little bit unfortunate. So no changes from Horror in High Gear, and so uh, we're just going to dive right into uh, the scenario. We are set up and ready to go in Octagon. Man, uh, I don't really know a whole lot about this scenario. I've heard through the grapevine that it is... Uh, can be tough, but uh, we will see about that. Who knows? Maybe this playthrough will be uh, very short indeed. I do know that we uh, eventually face an enemy named Osiris Marsh, and uh, we probably have to go into the tidal tunnels at some point based on the uh, the setup description 
but uh, we shall see. We have the uh, five locations to start on the table, as well as this card captured. So uh, it sounds like we have the potential to be captured at some point. The uh, keys, which were absent from Horror and High Gear, make their return here. We have several of the keys set aside uh, up here, and uh, we also have uh, two keys that are random. I believe it is the purple and green key. Agenda 1A is Fog on the Bay. A curl of mist wraps the lighthouse in an otherworldly veil. The waves lap at the rocks on the shoreline like hungry, wet tongues. Overhead, the moon gleams unnaturally bright in the sky. You have a curious feeling. You are not alone. Locations on the same row are connected to one another. So all of these locations, Falcon Point Gatehouse, Falcon Point Cliffside, Lighthouse Stairwell, and Lighthouse Keeper's Cottage are all connected to one another. So I guess they could be in any order, as the uh, scenario guide suggests. Not too sure whether you know going to one location is better than the other so i just stuck with the uh the location order as suggested by the scenario guide there is a forced effect on this card when this agenda advances move all doom on it to the next agenda and uh, this has a doom threshold of four act 1a is the lighthouse all signs point to this lighthouse being a base of operations for the esoteric order of dagon there's not much left of Innsmouth to investigate, so this is your best chance to find answers. What exactly is the order up to? You must find out before they realize you're here. The objective is to spend the requisite number of clues before the agenda advances. And we need three clues per investigator. So we need to basically pretty straightforward uh, initial uh, quest here, just gather three clues and spend them before the agenda advances in four turns. So that is straightforward. We are playing a light on the fog on standard difficulty. The skulls are minus one. If your location is flooded, reveal an additional chaos token. So I, I would assume that we are going to have locations, uh, you know, unflooded, partially flooded and flooded as this scenario goes on. The cultists, I believe there are two in the bag, are minus two, and if you fail after this test ends, increase the flood level of your location. So that's kind of nasty. We probably want to be at least minus or plus two above test, so we don't have to be uh, arbitrarily increasing the flood level of our locations and potentially drowning. The tablet of which there is one is a minus three, and if you fail this test and your location is flooded, take one damage. So as locations get flooded, we have the potential to take damage. Fortunately, Silas has nine health, so that shouldn't be too big of a problem as long as we don't draw a lot of tablets. And the Elder Thing is a minus four. If you fail, move the nearest ready unengaged enemy once toward your location. It loses aloof during this movement. So enemies can move to us and engage us and then end up, uh, presumably, we'll have to deal with them that way, even if they have the aloof keyword. We also have this card captured in play. It's a story card, and on the back of this story card is the holding cell, holding cells. So let's deal with captured first, and then we'll take a look at what the holding cells mean. The first time an investigator is captured, read the following. You are bound and dragged deep underground, then thrown into a sealed prison cell, surrounded on all sides by dripping stone walls. Your cries fall on deaf ears as your captor's footsteps fade into the distance. Remove the captured investigator from their location and return each asset in that investigator's hand slots to their hand. So this is kind of like, um, what was that card from the Unspeakable? Oh, Straight Jacket? that bounced all your assets, all of your hand slots back to your hand. Turn that investigator's mini card sideways to indicate that they have been captured. Captured investigators cannot move, fight, or be engaged. Flip this story card over to its holding cell side and put it into play. It is not on any existing row or column and is only connected to sunken grotto locations through its connection icons. Place the captured investigator in the holding cells 
From now on, whenever an investigator is captured, resolve this same effect to return each asset in their hand slots to their hands, turn their mini cards sideways, and place them in the holding cell. So not a huge fan of that. Not, uh, not ideal to have, say, our meat cleaver or a sea change harpoon bounce back to our hands. Or our old key rings, for that matter. Although that might not be too bad if we investigate... We lose a charge on the old key ring, and then we bounce it back to our hands. We get another couple charges. That might not be too bad, or another charge, I should say. Let's take a look at the holding cells. It has the T symbol, and uh, we don't have any cards currently on the table with the T symbol, so that's, uh, that is for a future location. Three shroud location, one clue. Holding cells cannot be flooded. Enemies cannot enter or spawn at holding cells. If one would spawn here, spawn it at any sunken grotto instead. As an action, we can test three combat to break the bars or three agility to pick the locks. If you control the yellow key, this test is automatically succeeds. If you succeed, free an investigator who is captured here and it is worth a victory point. And it is connected to the sort of squiggly line, red square, and green diamond. Again, uh, none of which are currently on the table. Well, fortunately, Silas has uh, four combat and four agility, five with the uh, uh, Peter Sylvester in play. And uh, if we can get track shoes down, he can go up to a six. So we shouldn't have too much trouble picking the locks. So... That is uh, good. At least we don't have to drive cars or pilot boats. That's, uh, as we found out in those scenarios, that's really uh, Silas's weakness as vehicles. So that is the captured location. Let's take a look at these locations in play. Falcon Point Gatehouse uh, cannot be fully flooded. Uh, cliffside can't be flooded. Stairwell can't be fully flooded and the Keeper's Cottage can't be fully flooded, and the Lantern Room cannot be flooded. So no, nothing really there other than that these locations are theoretically safe locations when the uh, the tide begins to rise, which uh, I assume will begin probably in, a, in Agenda 2 or Agenda 3 or something like that. So we should try to, uh, obviously I think it behooves us to try to complete this scenario as quickly as possible before all of the locations get to, too flooded for us to deal with. I think we're ready to, uh, to draw our opening hand here. So let's shuffle up our deck and see how we do in, uh, in a light in the fog. Whoops, we want, don't want 65 cards, we just want five. All right, we have an old key ring. That's good, because we do need clues. We've got Scrounge for Supplies, Lucky, Take Heart, and Siren Call. So let's replace the Siren Call with something a little more. Oh, there's our other weakness. So both weaknesses drawn in our opening hand. And we get a sharp vision. Okay, that's good as well. So we've got a lot of Investigate, actually, in our opening hand. So I do like that. Uh, let's mulligan the scrounge for supplies and take heart we'll keep the old key ring lucky and sharp vision as our to power our investigation here so we can beat this agenda hopefully we can get some sort of weapon well there's an unrelenting that's always uh, excellent for silas and peter sylvester so that's uh gotta say i like that opening hand so Peter will push us up to a uh, uh, three will power, I believe, and five agility off the bat. The old key ring gives us our investigation, and unrelenting lets us seal the tokens that we don't want. Namely, probably in this one, I don't know, well, minus four, obviously. There is another minus four in the bag, so those two will probably be sealing the elder thing in the minus four, and then whatever else we uh, we want to uh, to get rid of. I think we're ready to start here, so let's uh, go to the first investigation phase of the game. Now, oh, we have to flip over the Falcon Point uh, gatehouse. Zero clues. Well, that kind of sucks. 
Hook and Point Gatehouse cannot be fully flooded. One Shroud Location Zero Clues. Resign. You head back into the woods, leaving the lighthouse and its mysteries behind. If you control the black or red keys, place each one you control on the current act. Okay. Well, I did read the introduction to this scenario, and uh, Alina Harper suggested this was sort of an all-or-nothing scenario, so... I feel like if we are expecting trouble, i.e. we are not going to be able to finish this scenario, perhaps resigning is, uh, is the way to go here. So we may uh, have to consider that resign option. But no clues here, so we're definitely going to have to go elsewhere to, uh, to grab some clues. So let's do a bit of a setup turn here. I would prefer not, I mean, we're going to need three clues. That's going to take us some time, but we're going to need our old key ring to do that. So we'll put that down. Uh, we're also going to put Peter down and then move. So we play old key ring, Peter, and move to, might as well just go down the line here. I don't, I don't know what these locations do. One Shroud location with one clue. This is Falcon Point Cliffside. Cannot be fully flooded. As a free triggered ability, if you control the white key, using the white key, you peer out into the darkness, stormy horizon, and something sparks in your memories. Read flashback 12 in the campaign guide. Well, the white key is among these keys I have set aside. So uh, we will need to find the white key before we can do any such uh, gazing into the, uh, the horizon, but glad to see a one shroud location to, uh, to start things off. But that unfortunately is going to end our turn. No enemies to worry about during the upkeep phase. We draw inquiring mind and we go to the first mythos phase, one of four doom. Our encounter card is going to be hideous lullaby. If there are no deep one enemies in play, hideous lullaby gains surge. So what happens if there are deep ones? Otherwise, find the deep one enemy with the highest fight value. Test willpower X, where X is that enemy's fight value. If you fail, take two horror. So this is another uh, iteration of, uh, of, man, now I'm having a brain fart here. The, the sanity one. We all know what it is. This is just another iteration of that. But this one, uh, Rotting Remains, but that one surges into, uh, of course, it surges into a Rotting Remains. So uh, we don't have to uh, think too hard about that one. So test three for each point you fail by take one horror. We don't have a ton of sanity. We only have five sanity, but we do have Peter on the table. So our willpower is currently three. Um, do we use Unrelenting here? I think so. Let's uh, let's drop an unrelenting out there. We don't want to take any more horror than we than necessary this early in the game. So we're gonna do some sealing. There's a minus four. We don't want that. There is the um, elder thing. That's a minus four. We don't want to have to deal with that. And then it's basically a minus three. So I guess we'll take. It uh, doesn't really matter. We'll take the the, uh, the tablet. So we'll seal these up and uh, see how we uh, see how we do on this skill test. So we are currently with uh, unrelenting. We are at a four. So we'll shuffle these up. So we are currently at a four willpower. With unrelenting, we do have a lucky in our hand if we really bomb this skill test. So let's see how we do. Chaos bag says minus three. So that puts us at one. That will put us at a one. Or we can actually. I think what we're going to do here, if we bounce Unrelenting back to our hand, that puts us at a zero, but then we can play Lucky to go up to a two, and we'll take one Horror, which Peter can uh, soak for us. So let's do that. 
Not prepared to let unrelenting go at this point. I want to keep that in my uh, toolbox as long as possible. So we'll play our lucky to bounce us up to minus two. Uh, or our uh, skill value of two. And Peter will take one horror for us. And he should be able to heal that off. And that is that. So first mythos phase goes after our, uh, our poor sanity. Let's see what turn number two has in store for us. So we are at Falcon Point Cliffside. There is one clue there. Let's do some investigating. Uh, I think we're just going to go... I mean, we could use our old key ring here. So let's do that. We will reduce the shroud value by two. Uh, we really need to beat this, uh, beat this agenda around the corner. So uh, we will use our old key ring. So we're going to go 2v0. So basically anything but an auto fail is good news for us. And of course, speak of the devil, there is the auto fail. So first action, all we had to do was not draw an auto fail, and of course that is exactly what we draw. So let us try again. We don't lose any keys or anything. Again, uh, minus two uh, for this shroud. We don't have to exhaust this or anything like that. Uh, all right, so we get a minus four. Boy, the chaos bag is throwing some high numbers here. Minus threes, minus fours, but we do succeed. So we'll spend a charge on the key ring and grab this clue. Unfortunately, I had hoped to grab two clues this turn. That does not seem likely. So we're just gonna move to the lighthouse stairwell. Three shroud location with one clue. Lighthouse stairwell cannot be fully flooded. Yes, yes, yes. And it has the free triggered ability. If there are any relic story assets currently set aside, add one of them to your hand. So the relic story assets, there were three of them that we had a chance to earn in Devil Reef. But as you may recall, we had an absolutely awful run through Devil Reef and basically did nothing. So there are no relics to add to our hand. So this is just a three shroud location with one clue. So if we can grab that clue, we're going to need one more. So that was the investigation phase. Enemy, we pick up another sharp vision. So between two copies of sharp vision and inquiring mind and unrelenting, we're doing pretty well in terms of, uh, in terms of investigation. Let's go to the mythos phase. It is uh, the beginning of turn three, two of four doom. Our encounter card is going to be our first enemy. Deep one nursemaid, three fight, two health, two evade. Humanoid monster, deep one, aloof and retaliate. While deep one nursemaid is unengaged, each other deep one enemy at its location or connecting location gets plus one fight and plus one evade forced. After Deep One Nursemaid engages you, draw the top card of the encounter deck. That card loses Surge. Okay, so we have a Deep One Nursemaid hanging out in the stairwell. But currently she is not a threat. Currently. I know there are baby Deep Ones in this one that uh, could potentially dogpile us if we, uh, if we get caught out, but... Uh, Right now, our main objective is to gather clues, so that is our main goal at uh, for the time being. All right, uh, we want... It is the investigation phase. We need to gather two clues and advance the act before the agenda advances. So we need to either do it this turn or next turn, and we still need two clues. So let's, is this one vert? No, no victory points here. So let's use our old key ring again. I'm going to commit an inquiring mind to this skill test since there is a clue there. We're going to go uh, 
two, three, four, five, V1. Five, V1 to discover a clue. Chaos bag throws us another minus four. Holy cow. Auto fail, my, or minus three, auto fail, minus four, minus four. We're not playing this on uh, hard or expert, but the chaos bag seems to think we are. So we do succeed. We are at five, minus four puts us at a one. So fortunately, we do grab this clue. But we had to let inquiring mind go. We couldn't hang on to it. We've got two more actions. So we have the option of going up the stairwell or over to the lighthouse keeper's cottage. I'm just going to keep going, going right. Let's go to the lighthouse keeper's cottage. Oh dear. Four shroud location with two clues. Uh, and the old key ring is discarded, unfortunately. Lighthouse Keeper's Cottage, four shroud location, two clues, cannot be fully flooded. After Lighthouse Keeper's Cottage is revealed, place the set-aside yellow key on it. All right, well, we know where the yellow key is. So the yellow key is here. I believe we can grab the key if there are no clues here. Now, one of these locations was the yellow key, was it not? Uh, no, that was the white key. So none of these locations have to do with the yellow key. But we do need these clues. Four shroud location. Man, oh man. Um, we can take a basic investigate action with sharp vision, which gives us, we go to 5v4. And if we, if we succeed by two or more, we discover one additional clue at this location. Um, so I think we have to commit sharp vision and unrelenting to this. We want these two clues. So we're going to take a basic investigate action as our final action. Sharp vision gets two additional uh, intellect skill icons. So we're at a three, so we're at five, six with unrelenting, and we're going to go seal some tokens. So, yeah, minus fours can... We don't want minus fours in the bag, that's for damn sure. Uh, where'd the other minus four go? Oh, it's over here, because we drew it. And we'll get rid of the other minus three. Now, we have actually a deep one in play. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Where, do, where am I going here? Bring to front. Okay, let's seal the other minus. Let's seal a minus three. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can pass this skill test. Let's unseal. Um, we'll worry about it. Okay. All right, we're sealed. Oh, Peter should have healed that horror a long time ago. All right, so we're going uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, V, 4. Oof. Chaos bag says 0. Six V four and we draw a zero. That means we succeed if we if we keep everything. If we keep everything, we get both clues. If we let unrelenting if we bring unrelenting back to our hand, we only get one clue. That's a tough choice. Do I value having unrelenting more than having two clues? I do get a victory point here. And the yellow key. I think in this case, I think in this case, I have to let it go and get both clues. 
I think that's what we have to do because there's a key here and a victory point. Man, I, I hate to do that, but we do get both clues and a yellow key out of the deal. Uh, we can't flip the yellow. So let's just put the yellow key up here so we know we have it. We can grab that as a free triggered ability, I believe. So we have succeeded at the Lighthouse Keeper's Cottage. We grabbed both clues. We're going to get a victory point out of the deal and the yellow key. So that's good. But that's going to end our turn. Enemy phase, nothing happens. We get a resourceful. So that, if we succeed on something, we can bring a card back to our hand. We've got lots of good targets in our discard pile already. We've got an unrelenting in there. We've got a sharp vision, and we've got a lucky and an old key ring. So lots of good stuff for resourceful. So we're going to want to make sure that that, uh, that test is successful, if at all possible. It is turn four. Three, oh. I think before we do that, we should advance. So let's advance. Let's go back. We'll just go back to upkeep and advance during upkeep. Or does it matter? We usually advance during enemy phase if possible. So we'll just step back and uh, we'll go back to the enemy phase of the previous turn so we can advance. All right. We are advancing. Uh, eavesdropping on the enemy, Act 1B. As you tiptoe through the old time-worn structure, you hear muffled conversations from within the small cottage attached to the lighthouse. You press your ear upon a nearby wall and stand perfectly still, your heart racing. Find them, a deep croaking voice orders. Do not let them reach the grotto. The order's secrets must be preserved. Yes, O Sieros, a few quiet voices reply in unison. You wait until the sound of footsteps has faded before you resume your investigation. It looks like your hunch was right. Osiris is here. Spawn the set-aside Osiris Marsh enemy in the lighthouse keeper's cottage, exhausted. Place the set-aside blue key on him. Shuffle each set-aside copy of Worth His Salt into the encounter deck. Okay, so we've got a lot to do here. So let's go. Let's go do some stuff here. So Worth His Salt is going into the encounter deck. We're going to get Osiris, and he's going to be engaged with us. He has the blue key. All right, blue key. Uh, I think we need the basement. Worth his salt. Put the set aside lighthouse basement in location into play directly below the lighthouse stairwell. Lighthouse stairwell. So we put the basement here. And what else do we do? Advance the agenda directly to Agenda 2A. Do not resolve Agenda 1B. Okay, so... Advance the agenda directly to 2A. Do not resolve 1B. But we still have to put all the Doom on the next agenda. So we had three Doom. So we'll just delete that, and we go to Agenda 2A with 3 Doom on it. All right. So we've spawned Osiris. He is exhausted, but he will be engaged with us. We put the blue key on him. We shuffled Worth His Salt into the deck. We put the basement into play. We advanced directly to Agenda 2A. Okay, we did all the stuff. Act 2A is finding the path. Falcon Point contains many secrets the Order does not wish you to know. Perhaps dealing with Osiris will open the way. 
if an investigator enters lighthouse basement before the agenda advances advance so we need to go to the basement is our next goal here agenda 2a is unchanging as the sea the order knows you're here you have little time to spare you have to find the way into their lair before they mobilize to capture you Locations on the same row are connected to one another. Forced, when an investigator is captured, advance this agenda. Forced, when this agenda advances, move all doom on it to the next agenda. All right. Now we also have Osiros here. We're just going to put him engaged with us since he is going to be engaged with us. We are at the cottage and engaged with Osiros because we advanced during the last enemy phase so he would ready during the upkeep and engage us Osiris marsh the keeper of the lighthouse four combat six health two evade humanoid deep one hybrid elite hunter retaliate Osiris marsh gets plus two evade while his location is flooded that's currently not an issue but potentially has the potential to be a big one later forced after Osiris marsh is successfully evaded for each point you succeed by, take control of one key on him. So after we successfully evade him, for each point we succeed by, we grab a key. So we can get the blue key here. And forced after a serious marsh attacks you during the enemy phase, you are captured. Place each of your keys on a serious marsh. That's not great probably want to kill this guy unfortunately we're not really in a position to do that at the moment with a sharp vision and a resourceful being the only cards in our hand so we can evade osiros grab this key hopefully the blue key then we're going to have to move to the lighthouse basement uh, we had to spend three clues so we have a clue left that may be important later once we get to the basement we advance so pretty straightforward goal here now it is the it is the mythos phase now we haven't drawn a card for that so let's do that now so we'll shuffle up the encounter deck and draw our first enc our encounter card for turn four. It is going to be dissonant voices, no assets or events for us this turn. All right. Well, our task is pretty clear here. The question I am not entirely certain of at this time is, I can evade a Ciros and I could commit a resourceful to it to grab a card. The problem is I don't know exactly which card I would want back. Probably unrelenting. That one seems like the best because I can seal all the really negative tokens. So let's do that now. We're going to get our three actions. We're going to try to evade a Ciros with Resourceful. That puts us at a 6v2. We have uh, 5 Agility, thanks. Uh, six agi 5 Agility plus 1, so 6v2. Chaos Bag says that's going to be a 0, so we succeed by a whole bunch. We get to take the blue key. We get to exhaust a Ciros. Now, I think we want to kill him at some point, but we need cards to do that. We're going to need some cards to do that, but we're going to get... We're going to get our... Un oh, man. This is a tough choice. Because we can take Unrelenting, but that doesn't help us investigate. But if we take the old key ring... We're really short on cards. We're going to need to do some... Man, man, oh man. Uh, we do have a sharp vision in our hand that will put us at... 
three. That puts us at a five for one investigate. I'm going to take unrelenting. Oh, that feels awful, but unrelenting is so good. In, and the thing is with unrelenting, unrelenting can get us cards, which we need. We can take a skill test, commit unrelenting, seal the good tokens, and draw two cards, which I think is going to be better than the key ring in the long run. Then we're going to move twice to the basement. Uh, the door leading to the basement of the lighthouse is locked tight. You cannot enter this location unless you control the blue key, which we do. So let's flip this over. Two shroud locations, zero clues. Investigators at this location spend one clue per investigator as a group. Look at the revealed side of a tidal tunnel location on this row. Now, there are no tidal tunnel locations, and as far as I know, we haven't been told to put tidal tunnel locations into play, but that must be when we advance the act here. So, if an investigator enters Lighthouse Basement before the agenda advances, advance. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we... Really? That's it? Door leading to the basement of the lighthouse is locked tight. You cannot enter this location unless you control the blue key. After you successfully evaded, for each point you succeed by, take control of a key. We grab the blue key. We moved here. Okay, well, if a Cirrus Marsh is in play, add him to the victory display. Sorry, there's some game text here. Exploring the depths. You use a Cirrus's key to open the basement door of the lighthouse, expecting to find a small, a small stone cellar. What you find instead is a network of flooded caverns extending deep into the cliffside of Falcon Point, perhaps even below sea level. You were right to come here. Who knows what secrets the Order keeps here, away from prying eyes. If a Cirrus Marsh is in play, add him to the victory display. Well, I can't complain about that. That was okay. So we put the Sunken Grotto lower depths into play directly below Sunken Grotto upper depths and Sunken Grotto final depths into play directly below Sunken Grotto lower depths. So we may need to... Uh, I think we're going to need to actually zoom out a little bit here because we're going to have a lot of locations. All right, so we put Sunken Grotto lower depths into play below upper depths and final depths below that, and then we put the set-aside title tunnels locations into play until there are exactly four locations in each row. Shuffle each set-aside copy of Taken Captive into the encounter deck. So let's go find that. Uh, Taken Captive goes into the deck. 36 cards in that encounter deck. That's pretty beefy. Uh, and advance the agenda directly to 3A. Do not resolve 2B. Okay, so we're going to have to zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to have to uh, just give me a sec while I reorganize. So that goes there and there and there. And... All right, so I have set up the grid here. We have all the locations still staying there. And then we've got the tidal tunnels in a grid next to the sunken grottos. We have done all the other stuff. We put the sunken grottos into play. We've shuffled in the taken captive. Now we advance directly to Agenda 2B, or 3A, sorry, and there are three, uh, there's going to be three uh, Doom on it. So this goes away, and we add our three Doom, so we're keeping track of that. So let's deal with the Agenda first. Agenda 3A, the tide rises. A wave of cold familiarity washes over you as you see the water level starting to rise throughout the tunnels. 
The tide is rolling in. If you aren't quick, there won't be much left here to investigate. Luckily, you still have a way out should the tide rise too quickly. Locations on the same row are connected to one another. So all of these locations on these rows are connected, but these locations are not connected top to bottom. So this is kind of like echoes of the past in a way, like the historical society was set up. We have one sort of main column that we can go up and down, and then we have to go left and right from there. That's a lot of locations, though. It's a, a lot of locations to deal with. And this is a 10 shroud, uh, sorry, has a doom threshold of 10. And there is still an agenda four. So we have it. We don't know what that's going to deal with. We're on act 3A, however. I assume we're going to have to find keys. Worshippers of the deep. Deep below the lighthouse is a web of tunnels filled with information pertaining to the order's activities. You must learn what you can before escaping. At the end of the investigation phase, each investigator at a fully flooded location must either take three damage or move to the location directly below their location. Okay, so we take three damage. So we either take at fully flooded locations, we either take three damage or move to the location directly below their location. If each, if each undefeated investigator has resigned, advance. Okay, so we can basically resign at any time. Um, hint, you may wish to find what you came for before you leave this place. The black and red keys represent the objects you need the most. So we need to find the black and red keys. All right, well, the black and red keys can only be in nine locations. That's pretty rough. Okay, we also put this sunken grotto into play. Upper depths, two shroud locations, zero clue. Investigators at this location may spend one clue per group to look at the revealed side of a tidal tunnel location on this row. So we can use our clues to, to speed up our search for these keys. So theoretically, if we have nine clues, we can check all the locations and know exactly where we need to go. Unfortunately, um, yeah, that's, that's a lot of locations to deal with. But we're, I mean, as far as time goes, we've only got three of 10 doom. And none of the locations are flooding at the moment. And it doesn't look like um, it doesn't like look like there's a mechanic that will be flooding flooding the locations right now. Anyway, okay. Well, that's going to end our turn. That was our, a lot of stuff going on there, but we have uh, we ended our turn. During upkeep, we draw our second copy of Peter Sylvester. So no, no help there. Uh, I'd like our other old key ring, resourceful, anything to help us investigate. Because as you know, we can't grab keys unless the locations have no clues on them. So investigating is still going to be very important for us. All right. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to have a, a sip of my coffee here before we jump into turn five. All right, let me just check how much, how the time is going. Okay. All right, turn five. Let's jump in here. Mythos phase, our encounter card is going to be taken captive. Test four, if you fail, you are captured. Place each of your keys on holding cells. Okay, so we need to pass this test. We're going 5v4. So what we can do, we can commit unrelenting to draw cards. Oh man, but man, do I want to do 5v4? That's tough. 
So what was captured? Where were the holding cells again? Oh, it's connected to the various sunken grotto locations. Okay. Spawn it at the sunken grotto instead. We do control the yellow key, though. So we automatically break out. And we don't have anything in our hands, so getting captured is not a huge deal. And we don't lose our keys if we're in the... If we get captured, if I'm correct. We just lose stuff in our hands, which we don't have, so that's not a big deal. All right, well, I'm not going to worry too much about this then. I'm not going to commit anything. Um, actually, what I am going to do, I'm going to commit unrelenting, but I'm going to seal good tokens. I think I'm willing to be captured simply because I do have the yellow key, and uh, actually this Dissonant Voices is gone now. And I need cards. I need some cards, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to seal plus one zero and Elder Sign. So there's the Elder Sign, plus one and zero. So we shuffle these up. Okay. So... If all three tokens are sealed on unrelenting, draw two cards. So we get two cards. We get a scrounge for supplies. That's good, and not without a fight, which is not overly helpful at the moment because we don't have any enemies to deal with. But the scrounge for supplies is very, very good. All right, so we're going, technically we're going 6v4, but we're just going to probably pull this back to our hand because we want to keep doing this to, to draw cards. So 6v4, Chaos Bag says, there is the Elder thing. Okay, that's probably the worst. That's probably the worst token we could have drawn at this point, because what happens if we fail, which we did, we move the nearest ready unengaged enemy once toward your location. It loses aloof during this movement. So our friend, the Deep One Lady, moves toward us and loses aloof. So she engages us. And then something happens with her. After she engages a you, draw the top card of the encounter deck. That card loses Surge. However, okay, this is complicated. Oh, we're, we place each of our keys on the holding cell, so we have to actually get the key there. Okay, so that's going to be a problem. So how does the timing work? Now, what happens when we're captured? Remove the captured investigator from the location and return each asset to the hand. Turn that investigator's mini card sideways to indicate they've been captured. We can't move, fight, or engage. Flip to holding cell side. Uh, okay, so I think what we have to do here, this lady moves toward us after we draw the token she loses aloof she engages us after she engages us we draw another encounter card so i'm just going to put the taken captive here we get worth his salt attached to a cirrus marsh even if he's in the victory display uh oh so he's going to come back well that's nice so it's kind of like undimensioned and unseen so even if he's in the victory display, after Cirrus Marsh moves via his hunter keyword, if he is unengaged, resolve his hunter keyword again. So he gets double hunter, but he can't attack. When he attacks, he deals plus one damage and plus one horror. Discard this card. So we put that into the victory display. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so we do that. That all happens during the skill test. We're going to bounce. Uh, unrelenting back to our hand so we can keep drawing cards those go back into the deck uh, so then she unengages us 
or how does this work? Um, so we can't be engaged. Okay, remove the captured investigator from the location, return each asset, turn the investigator's mini card sideways. Sure. Capture this holding cell sign, put it in play. So what happens if we have an enemy? I feel like I saw that somewhere. Um, okay, yeah. So what happens, we'll put the holding cell over here, is we are taken captive. So that goes away. We put our keys on the holding cell. We go to the holding cell. We are turn our guy sideways to show we're captured. We're going to lock him so we won't ready. This lady just goes wherever. She can go to any of these locations. Um, let's put her. Let's put her at the bottom. Can we do that? No, she has to go here. She has to go here, I believe, because we move in from here to there, and there's a clue there, and we need to grab all the clues. So if we grab the clue at the holding cells, then we can grab the keys whenever we're captured. Oh no, there's a clue will there's a clue will go on the holding cells every single time, so we don't want to be captured more than once, if I understand this correctly. All right, well, that's a little annoying. So we can grab this key, we, we can grab this clue and then these two keys and then break down the door and then move to any of these locations but we don't want to be captured again or we're in trouble okay so how do we do this most effectively uh, I think that was the mythos phase, a very long-winded mythos phase, but there's there's a lot of stuff going on here. So I'm trying to trying to go slowly enough to hopefully this isn't too boring as I as I work my way through this scenario. There's a lot going on. So it's the investigation phase. We get our three actions. So we ideally want to grab this clue, grab our two keys, and then we can take the action in order to free an investigator. So what happens when we free an investigator? We just turn ourselves right up so we can move. I feel like, let's just check. Uh, yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, okay. So I think when we free ourselves, we just turn ourselves right way up. So then we can move from the holding cells to any of these locations. Okay, so what we're going to do, we are going to... Now, did we do, we used Unrelenting during the Mythos phase. We can't use it again. Let's play Scrounge for Supplies. We're going to scrounge for our old key ring. We're going to, hmm. No, we can play the stuff. We just it gets bounced when we're when we're captured. If I understand this correctly. When we're captured, it bounces everything back to our hand, but we can still play stuff. We just can't move, fight, or engage. 
Yeah, okay. All right, so we put the old key ring into play. Uh, so we did scrounge for supplies, grab the old key ring, and now we're going to try to investigate. So we're going to go 2v1. Oh, man, oh, man. We get a minus one, so we succeed somehow. Luckily us. <clears throat> We have two clues that we can use to check locations. So that's good. Uh, as a free action, we can grab these keys. So next turn, we can open the door and start moving. We're still captured, though. All right. Nothing during the enemy phase. We draw another copy of Not Without a Fight during uh, upkeep. We go to turn six of the Mythos phase. Our encounter card is the Deep One Hatchling, Surge. Now, when enemies... Enemies cannot enter or spawn in the holding cells. If one would spawn here, spawn it at any sunken grotto. And it's going to Surge. So where do we want to put this thing? At its location. So we want to keep the babies away from the nursemaid. So let's put this one, I guess, down here. Uh, we'll put it at the Sunken Grotto Final Depths. And we will... Um, I guess we're going to go to the middle. <laughs> That's, when we break out of this cell, we're going to the middle. But we have to surge into Riptide. If your location is unflooded, Riptide gains Surge. Glad to see Surge make a resurgence here. Next card is Tidal Alignment Peril. Choose a location where there is at least one investigator. Increase that location's flood level. I don't think the holding cell can be flooded. Cannot be, so... Each investigator at the location takes one damage. If the cho oh my god, if the if the chosen location's flood level is not increased by this effect, tidal alignment gains surge. So is the increase the flood level each investigator at that chosen location takes one damage? I guess we'll take the da I'm not sure if we do actually take the damage, but I'm not too worried about that since we've got tons of health. So we'll just take the damage, but since the flood level didn't increase, we it gained surge. What is this? One, two, three. This is our fourth Mythos card. Hideous Lullaby. If there are no Deep One enemies in play, Hideous Lullaby gains surge. Otherwise, find the Deep One enemy with the highest fight value. Test Willpower X, where X is the enemy's fight value. If you fail, take two horror. All right. Uh, highest fight value would be the Deep One Nursemaid. So we have to test Willpower X, which is 3, or Take 2 Horror. Uh, we are going to go... Uh, we have Peter, so Peter can soak this for us. We're going 3v3. Um, what are the bad tokens? We can't increase the flood level, so that's fine. That's fine. And that's fine. So let's play Unrelenting. We're going to seal good tokens to draw cards again. Since we're going to probably fail this test, but Peter is going to soak the horror for us. So I'm not too worried. Seems like a good time to do this. So we'll shuffle that up. Or sorry, we'll seal those tokens. And we're going to draw two cards. There are our track shoes and a quick thinking. Like those, the track shoes don't get bounced either, which is really, really nice. So we're drawing in a, um, a token. We get a minus one, which we fail, and Peter will soak both horror for us. And we'll bounce unrelenting back to our hand. All right. So the Unrelenting has paid off. I wasn't sure whether we, we should take the Unrelenting or 
the old key ring, but the unrelenting is doing some serious work here to get us get us cards, including the short the uh, scrounge for supplies, which got us our old key ring back. Uh, speaking of which, I need to remove a token off of that since we were successful. Okay, so that's done. All right, we're going to the investigation phase of turn six. Uh, we are going to, I guess, break out of the cell first off. So first action, test three or three agility, three combat or three agility, or if you have a yellow key, you succeed automatically. So we succeed automatically. We free the investigator. So, uh, remove the capture. So, yeah, it stays on the table until we're captured again. Am I correct in that? Healing cells cannot be flooded. Investigated, blah, 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 blah. So, just let me confirm something here. Um, from now on, whenever an investigator is captured, resolve the same effect. Return each asset in their slots to their hand. Turn their mini side and place them in the holding cells. Okay, so we don't... Capture doesn't flip back to the captured side. Okay. Well, that's good news. Okay, so this is back. We are back to normal. We are free. And we have... Um, both our keys back so we can come and go from the holding cells as we wish um, we're gonna move to this middle grotto this is the lower depths uh, we can again three shroud locations zero clues investigators at this location may spend one clue as a group to look at the revealed side of a tidal tunnel location on this row so I guess we'll do that We've got two clues, so let's look at two locations. Let's look at this one over here below the lighthouse cottage. So we want black and red keys. This is the Shrine to Hydra, five shroud location. Two clues. Clues cannot be discovered from Shrine of Hydra except by investigating. While an investigator at Shrine of Hydra controls the green key, Shrine of Hydra gets minus three shroud. Forced after Shrine of Hydra is revealed, place the set aside red key on it. Victory one. Okay, so we know where the red key is. So that was lucky. So the green key would reduce its shroud to two, which would let us use the uh, let us use our our uh, old key ring there successfully. Let's use another clue. Let's just look at this one below, this location below the Falcon Point cliffside. Uh, this one is the underwater cavern. Two shroud location with one clue. As an action, move from underwater cavern to any flooded cave location. After underwater cavern is revealed, it becomes fully flooded. So nothing there that we want. So we don't know what this location on the far left is, but we know the red key is right here over on this side. To the left of us, or sorry, to the right of us is the red key, but it would help us if we got the, the green key in order to make sure we can guarantee we get the red key. Yeah, I have a feeling that this one is going to be tough simply because there are nine locations to search and basically we have five, <laughs> five turns to do it. I know there's another agenda, but it only has a doom threshold of three. So, oh, but the, the tide will continue to rise. Okay, well, uh, let's play our track shoes. I think we need our track shoes out as our final action this turn. Uh, so we're going to spend three resources to gain our track shoes. And the track shoes don't, don't go anywhere when we're captured, so that's fine. Actually, getting captured now to bounce the old key ring back to our hand would be okay. 
uh, as long as we're not cap. Well, I think the only way to get captured is by Osiris maybe or um, cards in the encounter deck. All right, so that was our turn. There are no hunter enemies on the uh, on the board. One of the nice recent additions to uh, to Octagon is that uh, when you advance to the enemy phase and you and there are hunter enemies on the table, they are highlighted for you, where they are targeted. So you know you have to move them, which is nice for people like me who often forget about hunters. We go to upkeep, we draw a resourceful. That is very nice. We can get another old key ring back if necessary. So five shroud location. Basic investigate would put us at three. Would put us at five. Yeah, we kind of need the green key if we're going to do this with any sort of reasonable amount of success. Peter is going to heal. Should have done that during our turn, but that's fine. Turn seven. The mythos phase of turn seven. Our encounter card is going to be Riptide. If your location is unflooded, Riptide gains Surge. Oh, okay. So we're going to play this game some more. Next card is Totality. Omen Terror. Test three willpower. If you fail, put Totality into play in your threat area. After you enter a flooded location, take one horror at the end of your turn and discard totality. Okay, well, at least it doesn't surge, which seems to be the, uh, the name of the game here. So we need the green key. That is what we are looking for. We are looking for the green key. We want... So we have one location on this row, the location on the far left that we haven't checked. So I say we just move around a lot. We use our, maybe we just use our track shoes to really just rapidly move around this map looking for the stuff that we need. So we can go to tidal tunnels, and then if it's not what we want, we can just use um, use the track shoes to move again. And we're up to six agility, which is good. Okay, first action. Uh, let's move to this location over here. It's the pump room. Three shroud location, zero clues. Test as an action. We can test intellect two or agility two. If you succeed, choose two locations. Decrease the flood level of one location. Increase the flood level of another. If you succeed by two or more, you may instead choose just one location and decrease its flood level. So we know, I mean, the pub room would be nice if this area was flooding, but it's not, so we don't care. So let's use our track shoes. Uh, to move quickly. We're going to test 6v3 in order to uh, to move. Uh, let's do that. We get a minus 3, so we bounce back using the track shoes back to the sunken grotto. So we know the red key is to the right of us. We need to find the green key and the green key would help us get the red key, and we need to find the black key, which is probably, based on the this scenario so far, you probably need the purple key to get the black key easily. So let's move up here to Sunken Grotto Upper Depths, we don't have any more clues, so we're just going to have to check the hard way. Let's move into tidal tunnels. Man, that's dangerous. It could be flooded, but who cares? It is the moon room. Three shroud location with zero clues. It's a cave. As an action, if moon room is unflooded, resign. You don one of the empty diving suits and dive into the reflecting pool. If you control the black or red keys, place each one you control on the current act. After 
uh, moon room is revealed, increase its flood level. Okay, so this room is partially flooded now. So we can go to the pump room to unflood the moon room if we want, I guess. I don't know why we would do that at the moment. Um, we have to be at fully flooded locations to take damage, so that's fine. So yeah, we just we don't find anything, basically, is what happens. Okay, well, we go to the enemy phase, nothing happens. We go to the upkeep phase, we draw Inquiring Mind. We go to the Mythos phase of turn 8, and our encounter card is Zizergy. Uh, okay, forced after you enter a flooded location, take one horror. So we can, tr um, after you enter, so we would have to technically take a horror. So I think we take a horror from totality when we enter the moon room, but we'll just place that horror on Peter Sylvester and then he heals it. So we end up basically with one horror left. Uh, Zizergy, peril, you must decide. Choose one. Each investigator loses three resources. Each investigator takes two horror. Place one doom on the current agenda. I'll lose the resources. I have plenty, and I don't really need them for much right now. And that's our turn. Okay. We're starting to speed up a little bit here. We have some momentum. Man, I'm actually running out of time to finish this playthrough today. This one has been a has been a long one. How long have we been going for? An hour and twenty three minutes. Usually, the playthrough so far have been about an hour and a bit, hour and thirteen minutes, I believe. So this one is going to be this is going to be a long one, I think. Well, there is seven of ten doom. So then things start to get serious. All right, well, we're going to move. We're going to track shoes. Uh, 6v3. We draw a minus 4. We fail on the track shoes. All right, well, that kind of sucks, but uh, we're not going to get an extra action out of it, so we'll just move. Move to this title. Oh, we don't have to do. What am I talking about? We're over here. Okay. All the locations on rows are connected to each other, right? Locations on the same row are connected to one another. So we don't need to move to the sunken grotto first. I'm being dumb. So we can just go... Um... Let's get our actions back. So I'll keep that. I'll keep that move. I'll keep that uh, token we drew. So we move here. We try. We don't need to actually do anything here. Um, so this is a tidal pool. Three shroud location. One clue. Tidal pool gets plus one shroud while it is partially flooded and plus two shroud while fully flooded. Forced after title pool is revealed, randomly choose one of the set aside face down keys and place it in the title pool without looking at it. Okay, so we found the green key or the purple key. See, this is the problem with this whole scenario, unfortunately, is you end up, all of this randomness just creates, ran it's, it's hard to deal with when you're a solo player but we'll see what happens. Maybe we get the green key out of this. So it turns out we don't need to use the track shoes, so we'll just leave that uh, leave that aside for now. Uh, we do want this key, though. So let's commit an inquiring mind to this test. So we're going to go... Um, do we use the key ring? Yeah, we use the key ring. 
so we'll go inquiring mind so we're going to go two five v one chaos bag gives us an elder sign oh that is sweet so we were two v we can pull so we can go get a skill if we have one um a resourceful so we go get a skill and we get to return it to our hand so we were 2v1 if we pull inquiring mind back and we get resourceful back and we get to trigger resourceful and we get to go get another card so let's take um, let's take a sharp vision just in case. Okay, so we committed Inquiring Mind, we got an Elder Sign, we return, we get to play Resourceful from our discard pile, we're going to pull Inquiring Mind back to our hand, uh, and then at the end of the phase we get um, Resourceful back. So we get this clue, and we get this key. Okay, what is this key? And we lose our old key ring. Okay. So we get this key. Of course it's the purple key, because why not? That's not the key we wanted, but I think we need that key anyway to get the black key, probably. So that's fine if we can find another tidal pool that would be really good so we have one action remaining we've got a fistful of cards after sort of starving at the beginning let's just move to this next location it's a tidal pool well look at that there's our green key super lucky that's what happens when everything is random. Luck plays a huge role. So we managed to find the second tidal pool. It is not flooded at the moment. Uh, we get to randomly put the green key on there since we know that's the only key available. And so we can get the yellow, We are, sorry, we can get the green key we can go back to the tidal tunnel where the red key is then we just need to find the black key and try to get out basically is what we're doing here all right well that was our turn we go to upkeep we draw our sea change harpoon i'm going to discard a not without a fight since we haven't needed that at the moment we go to turn nine uh, turn 9 Mythos phase. 8 of 10 Doom. Our encounter card is frozen in effing fear. That's going to slow us down a little. Oh, and Peter shouldn't have a horror on him. That is going to slow us down. Quite a bit. We can try to pass it. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to play this, I'm going to finish this turn and then I'm going to just save and quit and have to finish this recording another day because, man, oh man, this has taken a long time. All right, well, we got frozen in fear. We get our three actions. Moving, evading, and fighting are bad. We want to discover this clue. So what we can do... Uh, let's commit resourceful and inquiring mind. So we're going to go 5, 6, V3. Is that going to be enough? 6, V3. Oh, I want to go more than that. I want to go more than that. Um, 
We do have two sharp visions, but I don't know what the black key is going to be like. That's the problem. We know the black key is down, down at the bottom. We don't know what the black key is going to require. But we have clues, so we should be able to just basically go there, nail the black key, and then try to get the hell out of here. I mean, even if we have to use the pump room to decrease the moon room's level and then go there and resign. Um, we need the white key to do that. And that's basically it. Okay, so we're going 6v3. Is that going to be enough? Oh, man. Um, I could take an extra action. 7v3? No, let's commit unrelenting. 2, 5, 6, 7, v3, and we're going to seal some tokens. Seal all the baddies. Uh, let's seal the elder thing. Doesn't matter. Uh, we don't want... Uh, those are minus two, so we don't care about those. Uh, minus threes, that's fine. So we just want to take out as many bad tokens as we can. Close and shuffle that up. Seal those, and then pull, which gives us a uh, cultist, which is a minus two. So we're 6v3. Or set, we were 7v3. We can pull unrelenting back to our hand and still be 6v3. Uh, minus 2 is 4v3, and we pass. So we get something back. We're going to take the old key ring back. Uh, so those go back. We lose these two cards. We get this clue. We took an action, we get this key, which is green. Now we can go over here and get the red key. We can go to that location we already identified. Now we're, if we move, <clears throat> it's going to take us two actions. But then we can use track shoes to move again. And then we're going to have to deal with Frozen and Fear somehow. <clears throat> um, don't have a lot of good options to deal with Frozen and Fear, but we're going to double, we're going to spend both actions to move, then we're going to track shoes. Uh, what did it do? It didn't draw us a token. Oh, it's a minus four. Again, uh, the worst the worst token we could ask for. If you fail, move the nearest ready unengaged enemy once towards your location. It loses aloof, so... Um, this... So we've got the deep one nursemaid. She engages us. And sorry, we were doing 6v3 and we drew a minus 4, right? So she engages us. Oh, we're, she's going to attack us too. What a pain in the butt. That actually might help us though, because we have a, a not without a fight that we can use to try to break the frozen in fear when we're engaged with an enemy. So while deep what no nursemaid is unengaged, fine. Draw the top card of the encounter deck. We get a lurking deep one. Now this is a problem. Now we're being attacked by everything. This could be a big issue. This could be a significant problem. All right. Um, So we drew for the deep one nursemaid. We drew a lurking deep one who engages us, so we take a damage. 
All right, then we go to the frozen in fear. We can test three. So we're, we're three, we're engaged with an enemy. So we play not without a fight to go four, five. Peter is six. Chaos Bag gives us a zero, so we pass and we get rid of Frozen and Fear. That was important. The one guy's pretty tough to evade. The Nursemaid isn't a huge deal. We can evade her. Man, that uh, we've drawn that uh, Elder Sign token twice. Uh, or the Elder Thing token has engaged us twice with that lady and... Uh, it's been rough. Okay, so that is basically our turn, but we still have to deal with um, their attacks. So we're going to take two damage. So during the enemy phase, we take two damage and two horror, which Peter will soak for us. During upkeep, we draw our second copy of Track Shoes. And I think that's where I'm going to take it. Uh, that's where I'm going to stop for today. So I'm going to have to come back and uh, finish this game another day. All right, we are back. It is the following day, and we are picking up uh, the game where we left off. We are headed into the mythos phase of turn 10. This feels like it could, uh, the game could hinge on uh, this mythos phase. I'm already engaged with two enemies, so if I end up pulling another one here, I could be in big trouble. We also have Eight of Ten Doom on the uh, agenda, which means I am running out of time. So I am hoping if all goes well, maybe I can grab this red key. I don't think I'm gonna be able to grab the black key. I just think there's probably too much to do if I can get the red key and either get out through the moon room or uh, Falcon Point Gatehouse, I will be happy. So let's uh, let's see what happens. Turn 10, Mythos Phase. Our encounter card is Dissonant Voices. So no events or assets. Okay. Well, that is a huge relief. That could have been very bad indeed. Let's get our three actions. So what we need to do is basically evade all these chumps if we can and then uh, get down to this tidal tunnel on my right, get the red key, which will probably mean we need to play old key ring to reduce the shroud to zero. Pump room, moon room gets us out. If we get lucky, we could try for the black key, but that seems we'd have to go through this deep this deep one hatchling with uh, with our shoes and then get lucky on the pole. And then we'd have to go to the moon room. It just feels like there's a little too much to do because I suspect once we advance to uh, agenda 4A, we're going to start flooding from the bottom up. And so all of these will become either partially or fully flooded, all these locations at the bottom, and then we're just going to each time the, the agenda rolls over, we're going to get higher and higher. And uh, we don't have a lot. Well, we've taken four damage, so we don't have a ton of health to work with here. So let's do some evading. We do have a quick thinking in our hand and a resourceful. And we could use the resourceful to get not without a fight. So that would be actually quite helpful. I think that's a good idea. So let's play. Uh, so we're going to go 6v2 versus the deep one nursemaid. Let's commit quick thinking and resourceful. We're going to be going uh, 7, 8, V2. And if we succeed, 
we will either get an additional action or we can pull a uh, not without a fight back to our hand so then we can uh, evade this deep, lurking deep one chaos bag says skull that is a minus one so we succeed so we're gonna discard the quick thinking so we get an additional action and we get a to pull a card with resourceful which will be not without a fight because we need to evade uh, this other thing the uh, what is this one lurking deep one no he's not evaded she's evaded so we've evaded her okay now we're gonna commit not without a fight and unrelenting and we still have the ability to pull a card back uh, not without a fight gains two agility skill icons so we're going eight v well actually we don't need it we don't even need to commit unrelenting to be honest because we're going eight v four right six seven eight before we don't need to commit the unrelenting chaos bag says plus one so this chump is evaded uh, that was our free action from quick thinking okay so we had we evade. so we've got two actions left um that was a plus one. Uh, we can pull unrelenting back to our hand. Or sorry, not unrelenting, but not without a fight. Since we got a plus one. Uh, now we're going to go to... We're going to move. Now, do we use track shoes here? 6v3. Um, would save us an action and then we could commit, we could play the old key ring. Uh, we can't play the old key ring this turn because of uh, dissonant voices. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go move because I'm worried about pulling another uh, elder thing and having, you know, these deep ones come and re-engage me, which is not ideal. So we'll move here to the Shrine of the High, Shrine of to Hydra, five shrouded location, but we've got the green key. So it's shroud value minus two. So we need to discover uh, two clues here. Actually, maybe we don't play the old key ring. Maybe we just go for uh, sharp vision here to get the two clues. So we put the set aside red key here. And so that's so it's going to be it's a two shroud location we are at a two so we could go to five six v two and seal bad tokens with sharp fit and then use sharp vision to grab both clues grab the thing then we could go to the pump room and then it would just be the moon room, depending on what happens with this agenda when we advance. We go to upkeep. Uh, we draw Silas's net. Oh, that could be very helpful. Plus one agility on evasion attempts. And if we succeed, we automatically evade other enemies. That could be pretty important if we end up with too many enemies here. All right, we're going to turn 11, 
10 doom, we're actually going to have to suffer through a, a mythos phase or a, on a backside of an agenda. Yeah, this is what I thought. Locked in, familiar heavy breathing echoes across the slick rocks of the caverns and the stone walls of the lighthouse. You duck behind some cover as you hear footsteps approaching. Then comes the loud creaking and slamming of a heavy metal door, followed by the telltale click that stops your heart dead. Someone has sealed the exit to the lighthouse above. Search all out-of-play areas for Osiris Marsh and spawn him in the sunken grotto upper depths. We remove all the Falcon Point locations from the game or add them to the victory display if they have victory X and no clues on them. Moot, move each enemy and investigator at those locations to Sunken Grotto Upper Depths. Each other card at those locations is discarded. Find the four bottommost locations that can have their flood level increased. Increase each of their flood levels. So yeah, this is, this is pretty much what we expected. I kind of expect, you know, when we drew that treachery, that... Uh, that stacked that card on Osiris Marsh. We kind of suspected he was going to be coming back, um, much like the uh, the hunting horror in uh, Miskatonic Museum. We sort of knew this was happening, and now we know we can't go out the Falcon Point Gatehouse. So that's that's out of the, out of our hands. We do get to add uh, the late housekeeper's cottage to the victory display which I guess is okay but uh, Osiris Marsh has he's a hunter right yeah so um, we need to bring this to front so how are we gonna get out of here we have to go out through the moon room as we suspected and the moon room has a lot of dudes in front of it. So Osiris is going to hunt down to lower depths. Uh, we need to deal with him this turn somehow. Um... Pretty easy to evade, thank goodness. We could try to kill him, but he's got retaliate, and we only have basically five, five combat, which I don't think is going to be enough. So these all leave play. Let's uh, throw those. So these are all gone, unfortunately. So yeah, if you if you can get both keys and get out that way, I mean, I'm glad we're not there now because that would have dumped us right back into that hell of uh, Osiris and gang. So we're fortunate that we weren't upstairs when this happened, but. Uh, Okay, and we have to increase the flood level of all of the uh, of all these locations, which we sort of suspected was going to happen. And add token flood tokens. Add a flood token here as well, and I think that's it. Control three is the flood token. Okay. All right. So we need to discover two clues. We need to grab the red key. We need to go to the pump room. We need to succeed on a test. And then we need to figure out how we're getting out. Okay, let's let's think about this. Okay, so Osiris is moving. Oh, he's gonna double hunt. Uh, 
Okay, so Osiris is going to double hunt due to worth his salt. So he's going to come after us this turn. This might actually be okay for us. If we can grab these two clues, Osiris, so we grab two clues. That's our first action. I'm just going to count our actions here on the holding cell. First action, we move to pump room. We pass, hopefully pass the skill test on pump room. So we move to pump room, pass skill test on pump room. That's our three actions. A Cirrus Marsh double hunts to pump room and engages us, but can't fight us this turn. So we don't lose any keys. We next turn, we evade a Cirrus. We move, move, track shoes to moon room. Evade, move, move, and use track shoes to moon room, and then resign. Okay, so we we can do this in two turns if things work out in our favor. Okay, so we've uh, we've spawned a Cirrus, we've removed the Falcon Point locations, we've increased the flood level. That brings us to Agenda Four A: Terror at Falcon Point. The crash of waves on the shoreline echoes through the porous tunnels underneath the lighthouse. Your pulse pounds in your ears as you struggle to stay ahead of the water. A Cirrus Marsh gets plus two health. Locations on the same row are connected to one another. Beware. The scenario may not end when this agenda advances, but the tide will continue to rise. So the bottom, I, be, I assume all the bottom ones will be fully flooded and then things will get worse. Okay. Um, it is the mythos phase. We need to draw an encounter card. Encounter card is another enemy. Damn it. Okay, that, that makes things a little harder. So after the lurking deep one engages you, we take a damage. Not a horror, a damage. Peter should have one less damage, or one less horror on him. Okay, so now we need to evade this chump and grab two clues at the thing and move to the pump room. It's probably going to take us an additional turn now to get out of here. So this isn't devastating by any stretch. It's tough, but not devastating. Um, how high do we need to be? Two, five, six v two. So we need to be six v two to make sure we pass, or we actually need to be higher than that because we need to succeed by two. Okay, so we're going to try, let's get our actions first. So we get our three actions. We're going to evade this guy, not without a fight, puts us at 8v4. Right? We are at 6, 7, 8. Chaos Bag says plus 1. Um... We don't want to pull that back. So this chump is evaded. Now we need these two clues. We absolutely need to make sure we grab these two clues this turn. So the Shrine of Hydra gets minus three shroud. So it's a two shroud location, so we're going to commit Sharp Vision, we're going to commit Old Key Ring, we're going to commit Unrelenting, we're going to seal bad tokens. Uh, we're going to seal the minus fours and a minus.
minus 3. To deal with that. So we are at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, V2. Do we go higher? I'm going to go 8, V2. 8, V2 minus 4 puts us at 4, V2. I'm at uh, 3, 2, 5, 6, 7. So there's a minus 3 in the bag, which would drop us to a 4v2, and we'd still get both clues. Okay, chaos bag says minus 2. Um, we can pull 6v2 would put us, uh, 6v2 would put us at 4, so we can pull unrelenting back. These go away. These go here, back into the bag. We grab both of these clues. We grab the red key. And we move to the pump room. Okay, so that was the, I think that was a, a critical turn for us to succeed at there. We have got the red key now. Now, next turn, we're going to, Aceros is going to double hunt. We're going to evade him, pass the skill test on the pump room, and move. To the sunken grotto then next turn we're going to go um sunken grotto upper deaths moon room resign is the plan and if it all works out we should be okay we're only going to get one key but i don't think we can afford to go into fully flooded locations simply because we'll take three damage and that's bad news. Okay, so we go to the enemy phase, Osiris double hunts and engages us but does not attack due to the double hunt. All right. Uh, we go to upkeep, we get a meat cleaver, we go to turn 12, mythos phase, one doom of three. Our encounter card is a rotting remains. Actually, Peter should not have this horror on him either. Uh, we will commit the meat cleaver. We're going to go 4v3. Chaos bag says minus four. Look at that. Eh? Three horror, just like that. So Peter, Peter will take two and we'll take one. All right, we need to evade Osiros. We're going six V two. Six V two. We don't need he doesn't get any our location is not flooded. So we're going six V two. Chaos bag says there's the elder thing again, but we did not fail. So a Cyros is evaded. Now we're going to try to... Oh, it isn't into... The pump room does have an intellect skill test. Of course it does, because Silas is such a handyman with machines. Cars, boats, pump rooms. He doesn't know anything about those. Man. 
how does a guy sail a boat without actually having any sort of mechanical know-how is beyond me. All right, so we're testing. Let's get our actions back here. We have two actions left. We're going to go uh, 6 V2 again. Uh, yeah, Chaos Bag says plus 1. So we choose two locations. We decrease the flood level of one location and increase the flood level of another. If you succeed by two or more, you may instead choose just one location and decrease its flood level. So we'll decrease the flood level of the moon room. And as our third action, we move back to Sunken Grotto, lower depths. All right, if we can get through this mythos phase, we can resign next turn. All right, uh, Peter heals one. I would have been dead long ago without Peter. I think Peter has been the absolute rock star of this game. Uh, I would have, I would have uh, been driven insane long, long ago without Peter. All right, we go to uh, upkeep. We draw Take Heart. Okay, so we haven't drawn our weakness, thank goodness. Now, can we get out of this, this scenario in one piece? We go to turn 13. Two of three Doom encounter card is going to be Rising Tide. Increase the flood level of the nearest location that can have its flood level increased. So the flood level of Sunken Grotto lower depths increases. All right, that, uh, that went okay. If no location's flood level is increased by this effect, it gains surge. That's fine. Okay, so this is it. This is it. I think, man, we could go for the black key, but that just seems so dangerous. We don't know where it is. If I knew where the black key was, I might consider it. The problem is Asiris is going to double hunt every single turn going forward. And we don't know what the shroud value is. Yeah, I I just don't know. I don't have the information. If I had if I knew where the black key was, I'd make a run for it, but I don't. So we're just going to settle for the one key. Not ideal, but what can we do? All right, we're going to move. We're going to track shoes. So this is the key test. We need to go V3, so we're going to commit whatever we need to commit. We're going to go unrelenting. We're going to go Silas's net. So we're going 6, 7, or we just need to go 7v3, right? And seal the minus 4s. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we seal the minus 4. Uh, the minus 4 and the minus 3. Uh, where is it? Uh, minus three, and where's that elder thing? So we seal all those up. Chaos Bank says, oh, for frick's sakes. Honest to God. How did I know that was going to happen? One token in a bag of 14 tokens, and I fail.
However, that is fine. We only engage the one because the other one is aloof. So yeah, we still we're still okay. He attacks us. Uh, we take a damage. And then we're just going to move and resign. We're going to move, take the attack of opportunity. We take a damage and a horror. We've got seven health of nine and two health, uh, two sanity of five and resign. So disappointing that, that we drew the auto fail there, but it didn't, uh, we were close enough to the end that it didn't matter. All right, well, we we made it out. We resigned at the moon room. Uh, place each one you control on the current act. So we place the red key on the current act. Uh, and we advance. All right, if at least one investigator resigned from the moon room, the underwater tunnels seem to go on forever. This is bound for Ehath Inlai. The underwater tunnels seem to go on forever, stretching into the murk-ridden eddies. Dark salt, dark salt water crashes against the glass helmet of your suit. After what feels like an eternity, you burst into the cold evening air, chilled to the bone. You pull the heavy suit off piece by piece the moment you reach the shore, R1. All right, so we do not read until the end of the scenario. No resolution was reached because each investigator was defeated and it was agenda one, two, or three, skip to four. Uh, if no resolution was reached because each investigator was defeated and it was agenda four, skip to three. Uh, we got R1. Exhausted, you throw yourself onto the rocky shore. Waves lap at your ankles as you stare up into the sky. Behind the clouds, deep crimson hues spell an ominous end for all of humankind. Your skull pounds with agony as you struggle to remember why. The moon and sun slide into alignment. A thunderous crash resounds in the distance. Dark, churning clouds swirl and seethe over the hateful ocean. What does it all mean? What is the truth behind the esoteric order of Dagon? What truth hidden in Devil Reef? Darkness overtakes your senses once more. So for each investigator who resigned through the Moon Room, record in your campaign log. Name of that investigator possesses a diving suit. We have a diving suit. If the black key was in the current act when the game ended, record in your campaign log the investigators possess a map of Iha Inthli. We don't. If the red key was on the current act when the game ended, recording your campaign log, the investigators possess the key to Iha Inthli. Yeah, that seems better than having a map. At least we can get in. For each set-aside relic story asset that was added to the investigator's hand during this scenario, any investigator may choose to add that story asset to their deck. It does not count toward the investigator's deck size. Of course, we did terribly in Devil Reef, so we have no relics. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Record this experience under unspent experience in your campaign log, but do not spend any of it yet. You'll be instructed to spend this experience at a later time. Proceed to scenario seven, the Lair of Dagon. I'm curious. They, Alina sort of hints it's an all or nothing game here. Resolution three. Yep. Each investigator is killed. You lose the campaign. When is that? That happens at four. Uh, if no resolution was reached because each investigator was defeated and it was agenda four, you get three, which kills you, which I suspected. Uh, Alina made it sound like this was a, an all or nothing uh, scenario. So we, uh, and, but if you resign, or if you're defeated and it's one, two, or three, it doesn't look like you get killed. You're not killed if it's agenda one, two, or three when you die, but you are killed if it's four. All right, well, we survived, and we get to go play the Lair of Dagon next. So let's uh, take a quick peek at uh, 
at experience points. I don't think we did all that well, to be honest. We didn't draw our weakness, so at least we're getting some XP. Uh, we got uh, we got one X. Uh, we got one shrine of Hydra, and we got one at the holding cell, and that's about it. Uh, so we got three. We got a total of three XP to spend at a later date. So that worked. It's unfortunately we uh, we weren't able to uh, to get a Seros in there for the five, but killing him was going to be very difficult, I think, uh, even with unrelenting, because we would have had the Sea Change Harpoon. We would have been at a five v four, which is not a good spot to be in, and then we would have we would have had to have hit him. We would have had to deal six damage to him. Oh no, eight damage. No, there's no way we were going to kill a Zeros. Not with a Sea Change Harpoon, we're not. So we end up earning three XP. We managed to make it out of the Lair of, uh, or not the Lair of Dagon, but uh, a Light in the Fog. If you're a patron of the channel, remember to stay tuned for the Patreon post-game show where I talk about uh, how my deck performed, as well as uh, share my thoughts about... Uh, about this scenario. That's going to do it for this playthrough. I'm glad, to, man, this was a long one, but uh, there was a lot going on. I hope that you uh, stuck with it, and I hope that you enjoyed it. And I will be back uh, soon with Scenario 7, The Lair of Dagon. Looking forward to bringing you that one. Till then, I hope that you have a fantastic day, and take care out there. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.